Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm going to do a comic book industry news roundup because my God, the salt is flowing. The comic book industry has never faced anything quite like this. Of course, we're talking about all the stores shutting down, uh, many of the publishers putting their pencils down, and Diamond abandoning shops, stopping shipping new product, and now they want to be the heroes. We're going to talk about that because I've got some, some pretty strong thoughts about that. We're also going to talk about the media flipping out on Indiegogo. Uh, very surprising. There's been a a um, concerted effort to paint Indiegogo as being the place where Yahtzees go to get their comic books funded, despite the fact that Indiegogo has been around almost as long or possibly longer than Kickstarter, and people have been doing comic book projects over there for as long as I can remember. But it was nobody's first choice until the last couple of years. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about uh, IDW freaking out and uh, they took the paycheck protection program but they still laid people off so i don't know where the money's going who knows who knows we're going to talk about that in this crazy story about a comic store ordering 500 copies of new warriors number one uh new warriors number one you know snowflake and safe space yeah we're going to talk about that they ordered 500 copies not because they think it's a good idea but because they think it's so terrible, people are going to buy it just to have a good chuckle. So before we get into it, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We're over 100,000 subs, guys. We're about 112,000. We cover comics. We cover animation. We cover movies. Uh, we just give our hot takes on pop culture, kind of whatever comes up that day that interests us. And uh, yeah, I am a former comic book industry professional. And uh, I kind of cut out a couple of years ago because there's no money in comics. And uh, we have a mortgage, we have kids, we have bills that need paid, but we still keep tabs on the comic book industry. And it's eating itself alive and it's become very, very salty. Uh, very salty because the comic book industry is sort of facing a collapse right now. It's so bad that even the mainstream media is picking up on it. And you know things are bad when the mainstream media talks about the comic book industry, uh, other than talking about the movies, right? Because the mainstream media, the general public, frankly, doesn't give a shit about comic books anymore. And that is the truth, unfortunately. Comics do not have the place in pop culture that they had even a couple of decades ago, unless you're talking about movies or video games or something like that. But Indiegogo has been very controversial over the last couple of years because here's a funny little story that happened. Well, it's not funny for the people involved, but uh, we talk about all the campaigns that have gone to Indiegogo that have made six figures. Man, this thing's really making the rounds. I just put this up. Um... The reason that Jawbreakers and Cyberfrog and all these other comics have gone to Indiegogo was because Kickstarter wouldn't allow Richard Meyer to put his Jawbreakers comic on Kickstarter, right? Uh, they have they had restructured Kickstarter in 2015. It's a public benefit corporation. They have people now that overlook your projects to make sure they align with Kickstarter's political beliefs, morals, call it what you will. Now, Meyer's comic itself wasn't anything controversial. It was basically a G.I. Joe type book. It had a giant ape in it. You know, nothing controversial, right? I've seen way, way worse uh, from Image Comics or whatever. Meyer himself wound up being controversial, though, because he was a pretty outspoken critic of the comic book industry on YouTube. So again, this was a case of where even though he didn't break any rules on the platform, people took a look at him and his behavior elsewhere on the internet and made the decision to not allow him to publish his comic book through Kickstarter. Now, I think legally they probably can do that because they have in the fine print, they did reorganize, they restructured the company in 2015. Kickstarter post-2015 is not the same Kickstarter it was prior to 2015. Uh, it's now like Kickstarter, PBC, Public Benefits Corporation. So they do have in the fine print that they are allowed to uh, not publish anyone's project for whatever reason, right? But they also brought in, I believe her name is Camilla Zhang. I got it wrong before. People called me out in the comments. I kept saying Zong because I heard everybody else say Zong, but I think it's Zhang. 
Is that right? Am I right? I'm, I'm terrible with names. Uh, anyway, she was brought in for two years to be the project or the uh, comic book outreach lead. A lot of people have accused her of having very strong political bias. In fact, if you read some of the articles about Camilla, she does seem like she's got some pretty strong political bias. Uh, certain kinds of projects she's looking for, certain kind of creators she's looking for, etc, etc. And I understand maybe when they brought her in, they're like, we would like to see more of XYZ type thing on this platform. But a lot of people have accused her of gatekeeping. Now, she came in after Richard Meyer's project was uh, canceled, I believe. But because he was forced to go to Indiegogo, and the only reason he was going to Kickstarter, let me remind you, the only reason he went to Kickstarter was because he had a deal with Antarctic Press. And there is currently a lawsuit going on right now as we speak between Richard Meyer and Mark Wade, industry veteran writer Mark Wade, because Meyer alleges that Wade made some calls and got his book uh, pulled from Antarctic Press. So he couldn't get published through Antarctic Press, Fine, so he went to Kickstarter and he was denied using Kickstarter. Now, I can only speculate that there were probably some phone calls made over to Kickstarter because there were people installed at Kickstarter that had uh, close ties to the comic book industry. Again, it might not have been Camilla herself, but it might have been other people and it's a very small industry. Everybody knows everybody, but I have no doubt that phone calls were made and he was denied the platform. So he went to Indiegogo and made almost a half a million dollars. And because of his success, other people followed and they went to Indiegogo and they made hundreds of thousands of dollars. The problem is the comic book industry doesn't like the people using the platform. So Indiegogo, which went from being sort of a D-list uh, platform for comic book crowdfunding just a couple of years ago, like you went to Indiegogo if you couldn't go anywhere else or whatever, you, you couldn't because you lived in a country where you couldn't use Kickstarter or you wanted flexible funding or whatever. It was nobody's first choice really for comic book projects. It didn't have a lot going on for comic books. So it went from that to being the biggest uh, platform for comics, maybe not in the number of projects, but definitely in the dollar amounts. Uh, Indiegogo in the dollar amounts, it, it's had more six figure campaigns in the last two years, definitely than Kickstarter has had. The comic book industry being salty has thrown shade at Indiegogo, the platform, because they're like, that's where all the Nazi creators go. That's a Nazi platform. In fact, I have a friend of mine, and I'm not going to name names because I don't want to start anything, but I have a friend of mine who decided to use Indiegogo and said that they were getting uh, behind the scenes pressure from industry people just because of the choice to use Indiegogo over Kickstarter, when it really at this point is a financial decision. There's more money to be had at Indiegogo than Kickstarter. Kickstarter is failing so badly that they had to lay off damn near half of their staff. 35% decline in projects year over year. They're blaming the virus. It's not the virus. You don't have a 35% decline year over year for something that just popped up like six, eight weeks ago, right? So that's a lie. So there's been a lot of shade thrown at Indiegogo and at creators using Indiegogo. And a lot of that shade uh, from my armchair observation has been coming from Mr. Mark Wade. Okay, Mark Wade, who I've never had a personal problem with uh, but uh, he has been throwing a lot of shade at these creators. He is in a lawsuit right now with uh, Diversity in Comics, your boy Zach Richard Meyer, for tortious interference for uh, getting his publishing deal canceled at Antarctic. And I'm going to say it. I'm saying it. This isn't Meyer saying it. This isn't anybody else saying it that I'm aware of. Possibly, maybe, possibly, I think, making a couple phone calls to make sure that Meyer couldn't even go to Kickstarter. So here we are. So Indiegogo is getting a reputation for being the Yahtzee platform. So what do we find today? Look at this Indiegogo campaign. Oh, who's this guy right here? Well, if it isn't Mr. Mark Wade himself using Indiegogo, all this time they have spent trying to destroy creators using that platform, and Mr. Mark Wade is using Indiegogo. I just think it's kind of funny, uh, kind of funny. Speaking of throwing shade at Indiegogo and speaking of salt, industry salt, Comics Beat does an article on Camilla Zhang. I hope I'm, I'm, I'm getting that right. Zhang, Chang, I hope I'm getting that right because everybody's like, it's not Zong. 
Uh, my apologies. My apologies if I'm not getting it right. But 45% of staff, holy hell. So Heidi McDonald is talking about Camilla and everything she's done, and she's promoting other projects, including Steve Rude. Uh, everybody loves Steve Rude, right? I like Steve Rude's art. I don't know what he's like as a person, but he's a damn good artist. He's sort of the artist's uh, artist, right? So that's fine. But then we get to the bottom of the article. And this is this is what pisses me off about these comic book blogs now. They used to be journalists. They used to be journalists. And now they just come off as being very, very bitter because they did not see this coming. Even though all the signs were there, I think the comic book industry is so used to winning. They're so used to driving people out. They're so used to squashing any and all dissent that they were not prepared for the other side to actually win and win big. Uh, you called it wrong, comic book industry. Uh, Zhang's departure led to new and tedious phase of Twitter culture wars with the Indiegogo faction claiming victory over Kickstarter. This has been a constant little drumbeat of late, and in truth, it would be useful to compare the two platforms. However, while Kickstarter is extremely transparent about their numbers, Indiegogo is extremely non-transparent. Indiegogo's bad. Uh, Zhang and her boss, uh, Margot Atwell, were our highly visible resources for creators and campaigns, attending many conventions and festivals, and quoted an interview. By contrast, there's no comparable figure inside Indiegogo to put their comics fundraising in perspective. There's no denying that Indiegogo has become a more and more important source of funding for comics projects of many kinds, but it hasn't lent itself to independent analysis yet, and thus far it seems to be a feature, uh, not a bug. What? It's also notable that while many people sadly were laid off at Kickstarter, uh, Zhang is the only one whose departure was news, a testament to the community she helped build. We hope she'll land on her feet soon. There are two ways of looking at this. The first is, yeah, Kickstarter, that's great. They've got a person shepherding comic book projects. That's awesome. Uh, it, whereas Indiegogo does not. But in the last two years, Indiegogo has blown up and Kickstarter has declined. It has declined so fast and so far that Camilla found herself out of a job. Again, I'm not dancing on anybody's graves or anything. I'm just pointing out that maybe there is a direct correlation between having somebody at your company vet projects and or at least giving the appearance of the company being selective in who is and who is not allowed to use the platform and the decline in revenue. Patreon, the same thing is happening uh, with uh, Sargon. People at Patreon did not like Sargon. They blamed the uh, card processor, as I understand it. They pulled the plug on his account. And a lot of people who aren't even the kinds of people you would think would follow Sargon also pulled out because it became unsafe. And what happened with Kickstarter, when they denied Richard Meyer the opportunity to publish his very benign comic book on their platform, they sent a message to independent creators that Kickstarter couldn't be trusted that they could basically pull the plug on your project for whatever dubious reason, because there was nothing about the project itself that was wrong. It was just that there were people at Kickstarter that did not like Meyer's hot takes on YouTube, but the two things really should not have anything to do with one another. Again, this is the comic book industry infiltrating Kickstarter, because I remember a day not too long ago where uh, you know the comic book industry hated Kickstarter. They thought it was e-begging. I remember uh, the, the Comics Journal, Fanographics, throwing shade at Kickstarter. Two years later, they had to use Kickstarter. This this happened with webcomics. We saw the comic book industry attack webcomics, call webcomicers amateur hour, call them unprofessional, uh, say that there were a bunch of wannabes who couldn't get published or they would publish stuff elsewhere. Meanwhile, they were the early adopters of Kickstarter. They benefited greatly. They had six-figure campaigns. A lot of these people moved on in the mainstream industry or moved into animation. And now all of a sudden you've got, uh, you know, the comic book industry proper, uh, a day late and a dollar short promoting Webtoon when you couldn't get them to touch any of this stuff, you know, with a stick, uh, you know, just a couple of years ago. So we've watched this happen. The comic book industry is arrogant and salty, and they think they're the tastemakers. This has been the biggest Achilles heel, I think, that the comic book industry has had, that they do not adapt fast enough. They can't read the tea leaves. They don't know where the, the general public is because it's become uh, an industry run by a bunch of elitist snobs. 
Yeah, to be honest, they're a bunch of elitist snobs. Uh, this is kind of funny, coming from Bleeding Cool. This is uh, Larry's Comic Book Shop. Uh, Larry's Comics bought 500 copies, 500 copies of New Warriors number one, just because he said no press is bad press. Uh, this is what the shop owner says. Marvel's upcoming New Warriors title has been taking a beating. Um, there are too many eyes on this for me to dismiss it. So yeah, he's he's buying 500 freaking copies, but bleeding cool, saying, "Well, all the all the people you'd expect are making fun of this." I mean, it's hard to tell if this thing is serious or not. Who the hell knows? Um, IDW uh, again, IDW hanging on by its fingertips. And we're going to talk about that because we're going to talk about Steve Jeppy. Uh, IDW took money from the Paycheck Protection Program, but they still laid off creators. I thought that's what it was for. I thought that's what it was for, because we talked about how Larry Hama was told pencils down on G.I. Joe, and Sophie Campbell was told pencils down on Ninja Turtles. Both of them very talented creators, both of them working on very well-known IP. So it was a very strange decision, I think, for IDW to, to pull the plug on those books. Who knows? Uh, anyway, so this is what's really aggravating. We, we watched this interview with Steve Jeppe and a couple of heads of uh, different comic book publishers, uh, including, uh, I think, Mike Richardson from Dark Horse. We had uh, Ross Ritchie from, from Boom, Gary Groth from Fanagraphics. Uh, there are a few others in this, this powwow on this comic book news channel. And Steve Jeppe was kind of holding court. Now, my personal opinion is Steve Jeppe cut and run on comic book shops. He bailed. He bailed. He left comic shops holding the bag. And then he decided he wasn't going to pay vendors what they were owed. There's no cash flow. We're not paying you guys. And then we're going to we're going to pay you guys, but we're going to trickle the payment out. We're laying a bunch of people off, whatever. Now we're supposed to get excited because Jeppy, now that he's got legit competition because there are other distributors popping up. Now we're all supposed to get excited by Mr. Jeppy, who he wants to start this comeback campaign. This is complete bullshit. This is complete bullshit. This is the supervillain setting a monster loose on the city and then fighting the monster he created to make it look like he's a superhero. We saw something like this in The Incredibles. Uh, we saw it in Megamind. And that's Steve Jeppy. I think Diamond is actually the villain. I think they're the villain. Uh, they screwed shops over. They screwed publishers over. They are probably the biggest reason why the comic book industry right now is facing an extinction level event as a lot of people are calling it and now he wants to be the hero for the problem he helped create that's funny uh everybody's on board and we're feeling unified as one industry no we're not one industry because there are so many people that were kicked out of the comic book industry for one reason or another, and they're still being shunned. But whatever, just you guys keep telling yourself that. Keep telling yourself it's one industry. They've got this little sticker, our comeback will be bigger. We want all the publishers to put that stamp in the upper right-hand corner of their comics for a period of time till the end of the year, so people coming in the store will look at the racks and there'll be a clear identifying mark that an interesting way to get everybody to do something together. So wait, 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 he's comparing it to the the comic book authority of the code oh my god even though they were all competed they all had it in the corner making them some way uniform that's not a good thing the comic book authority was not a good thing what the fuck jeppy how fucking tone deaf is steve jeppy i i just i don't believe it. why do you go back to this guy why do you go back to diamond after what they did why would you go back to them because they're the only game in town are you afraid of diamond He's, done that. He's going to do a challenge video to be released on a Wednesday. It's a challenge kind of a video. Is this like the Ice Bucket Challenge? Where we're taking, talking about the comeback. In my video, I, ch I challenge five people to do a video of their own challenge and their friends do the same. Hopefully we can like the Ice Bucket Challenge. Holy shit, I was just kidding. I was kidding. Get them to post either a video. Oh God, this is another comic book industry circle jerk. We saw this. I mean, speaking speaking of, you know, Indiegogo and those guys over there, right? I remember it was a year or two ago where the industry collectively uh, wanted to be in lockstep and they had this fucking weird mantra on Twitter. Everyone's like, I believe comics are for everyone and everyone is welcoming comics except the people we don't like. Beep, boop, bop, retweet. And everybody in lockstep uh, was putting this out there. 
And now people are starting to break rank because they're like, the comic book industry is not secure right now. I have to think of myself. You've got Sean Gordon Murphy going over to Indiegogo. Freaking Mark Wade, who spent years attacking the Indiegogo crowd, is now going to Indiegogo. It's over. The comic book industry as we knew it is, is completely fucking over. And at this point, it's got to be every creator, every publisher for themselves. Everybody has to be for themselves. You have to think about what's best for you. You have to think about how to make money. Um, and if Diamond doesn't make sense in the grand scheme of things, if it makes more sense to go with another distributor or to, you know, just mail the damn comics to people directly, then that's what you got to do. You don't owe this guy anything. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, he, he, he tossed a hand grenade into the industry and now he wants to be the freaking hero to fix it. But the, you made the problem. You help. You caused the problem. You know, Diamond didn't have to just completely shut down the way they did. Diamond did not have to hold everybody's money the way they did. You know, but you look at these publishers. They're so used to licking the scraps off of Diamond's plate. I mean, all those guys have pretty strong opinions in this meeting, and they were all, you know, two steps behind Steve Jeppy. Anything Steve Jeppy said goes. You know, it was like, God, does he beat you? I mean, what's the deal? Why are you guys so blindly loyal to Diamond? They should be serving you. They're a distributor. They work for you. Why do you have to lick this guy's boots? You know, he's not going to return the favor. You're not getting, you know, first sign of trouble. He cut and run, guys. He cut and run. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, I just, the more comics changes, the more it stays the same. Nothing here is going to change except we're going to have a lot fewer shops and we're going to have saltier and saltier media outlets and salty creators on Twitter until uh, Darwinism kicks in and some people just aren't in the industry anymore. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.